Thank you for joining Resurrection Lutheran Church this Sunday morning, giving praise with us for God's blessings of music, prayer, and scripture. I, Pastor Karen Perkins, will be sharing a message of grace, forgiveness, and hope. All of the worship leaders welcome you. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this face, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Now it's time for our children's message. Today is Trinity Sunday. Do you know what the word Trinity means? Uh, I don't oh, know. You don't know. Have you ever heard in church, have you ever heard us say three in one? No. You gotta open your ears, we say it a lot. Now, when we're thinking about church in the Trinity, three things in one place, what, what three things do you think we're talking about? You don't know? What did we learn about last week? Fire. Fire and the Holy Spirit. So, and there's fire. Is, is there any other images of fire in the sanctuary? Did we find any? Over there on the banner. Look, look straight up. Does that look like fire? Yeah. More banners. What's something else that what is another symbol on your paper there? The Holy Spirit. As a? Bird. As a dove. Do you see any doves? Yeah? You found them? That one's kind of a dove over there, too, on that banner. <laughs> yeah. Sort of. You know what? I don't think we have any that look just like that in our sanctuary. It's three rings. Put together but there's some that are separated but together on that banner yep so today what now we we've talked about the holy spirit what are the other two things that we talk about a lot in church that could be part of the holy trinity uh pastor no not the pastor <laughs> that is pretty silly we do talk the pastor talks a lot in church too yeah that's her job do we talk about, is there a person? Yes! Is it, wait, pause. Is there a person we talk about a lot? Oh, uh, yeah. Who? Uh, who, did, who do we celebrate their birthday? Uh, God. Sort of. God is part of that. Who's the other? So we've got God. We've got the Holy Spirit. Who are we missing? Do you remember who God's son is? No. Do you remember who rose on Easter? It's Jesus. 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 David. Did you just forget his name? Yeah. So that's the Holy Trinity, three in one. What? God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Can we pray? Yeah, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for the Holy Trinity, for all your parts come together that help us be whole. Amen. Amen. Okay, grab your thing. And here's the key if somebody wants markers in my office. Oh, yes. Let's go get some markers. Yeah! We are. And I invite everybody else to rise as you are able. Let us together welcome the gospel.
After his resurrection, Jesus summons his remaining disciples and commissions them to baptize and teach all nations in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Not get my shoes caught on the rope. Okay. It's, it's interesting here that in Matthew, towards the end, Matthew doesn't have this big miracle right now. That's been the resurrection and all the miracles that were done before it. What Matthew ends with is, is a reminder of three essential truths. All authority on heaven and on earth has been given to me. Jesus claims that. Jesus claims the authority that has been given to Jesus with the Father, through the Father, as part of the Father from the beginning. Jesus says, go, go. They were already worshiping him. He said, go. That's Jesus' next thing. All authority has been given to me. Now you have a job. Go, do it. Go. Making disciples and baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now, this is one of the few places in Scripture that we actually have that Trinitarian formula. It, the word Trinity doesn't show up. I'm sure you know that. But Father, Son, and Holy Spirit together. It's one of the few places that that wording comes together. And... Often we hear the baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and miss the part that goes up to that. Making disciples. Making disciples and baptizing them. Sometimes one of the... uh, uh, one of the things that, of course, we do, and you know this if, if you were an adult as, as you were baptized or if you brought a child for baptism or were a sponsor for a child for baptism, is that we do pre-baptismal preparation. We talk about what does it mean to be baptized? What does it mean to be the sponsor of someone being baptized? And what does that, what are you baptized into? Sometimes we have to remind people it's not a one and done kind of thing. Bring them in, get them done, send them out. It's not like that, right? We celebrate one baptism for the forgiveness of sins because because it's God's. Because it's God's and God doesn't need more than one. God can accomplish all of the claiming in one baptism. But that one baptism isn't just about one event. It's also about one baptism with Jesus, one baptism with each other, one baptism with all other Christians. One baptism. And much like when Jesus is raised, we say, he is risen. Right? There's that weird grammatical thing that we do all Easter season, he is risen. I encourage people to talk about their baptism in the same way. Not I was baptized, but I am baptized. Because baptism isn't an event. Baptism is a gift of grace that claims us as part of this body, right? So we are baptized, we live baptized, and this making disciples thing, 
is part of it. Baptism isn't for to do and forget. It's to live in a certain way, and the only way we can live in a certain way is to continue to be discipled. So we are discipled or disciplined, which is where that word's come from, our whole lives, and we are baptized our whole lives. That's why we celebrate it all Easter, uh, remembrance of our baptism. That's why sometimes when we, when we have a special need, we'll do an affirmation of baptism. It's a reminder we are baptized. We are living as baptized people. We are always baptized people. And so we've got this, this job to do. Go do it. Go make disciples. And we already talked about on Pentecost, there are a lot of different ways to do that. And then he says, teaching them what? Teaching everything I have commanded you. Proclaiming the gospel. That's our job, really, proclaiming the gospel. Teaching the good news of what Christ in humanity and Christ in history means about the good news about the unity of what Christ unified with God the creator and with the Holy Spirit as advocate, what that means. It's a notion that I don't care how new you are to Christianity, I don't care how advanced a theologian you are, it's, it's always going to be revealed to you because the Trinity is not easily captured in human language or human imagery. It's godly. It's a godly relationship. It's a godly movement. We sing the dance of the Trinity because it's this thing that's much like our baptism, always living, always relating, always creating. And then remember, remember, I am with you, because just about the time we, we start to deal with all the things that we have been taught and get overwhelmed by it, we're reminded, remember, I am with you to the end of the age. Much like we are baptized, we are being discipled, God is living, God is creating, Christ is with us. Always. There's this ongoing living thing about it that is harder to deal with a lot of times than doctrine, which we can state a doctrine, or a particular class, or a particular rule, or a particular guideline, or a particular... Um, translation of the Bible or particular, I mean, any of these particulars, right? You got that. That, that this, is, this is more than all of that. And that, believe it or not, is part of why we have the, the Genesis story at the, as the first reading today. The, the Genesis story, the first of the creation stories, there are more than one creation story in Genesis. And that also is easy to miss. This is the first creation story. And in this creation story, not all, uh, which by the way is not about science. I know you know that, but I have to say that every time anyway. This is about, this is about the, the Jews and later Christians celebrating the beauty of God's creation and the beauty of God's act of creation. It's describing the, the love that is in it, the godliness that is in it, the goodness that is in it. Not the timing. Right? It's about what God does when God separates, separates the void and the darkness from the void. That's creating space, creating space for us. Because before that, it was together. And now there's this creation of space so that the sky and the seas can relate to each other, so that the light and the dark can relate to each other, so that the living 
creatures can relate to each other so that humanity that God creates can relate to each other and can relate to God. God creates space for relationships and calls it good. And God creates humanity as a them here. In this creation story, the, the God creating male and female, God created them in our image. Well, if you weren't already confused by the Trinity, let's go look at what does it mean for God to say that humanity is created in our image. And we, already, we, we know we're you know, monotheistic, right? Three and one, one and three, monotheistic Trinitarian. And God says, in our image, we created them. Well, among other things, God created us to be in relationship because God's very existence is relationship. You cannot describe a Trinitarian God, a triune, three in one, God, without describing a relationship. One thing can stand on its own. Three in one is always relating. Humanity is always relating. There's an ongoingness about all of this, about the creating, about the relationship, about the baptism, about the discipling, about the teaching, about the Christ's presence till the ends of the age. But before we get to the ends of the age, some of you know that one of my favorite parts to point out about this passage is what God did on the seventh day. What did God do on the seventh day? Rested. Okay. What's the uh, third commandment? Third, third. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Right. Okay, which is not for God's sake. It's for our sake. All of the commandments are. But remembering the Sabbath day and keeping it holy is so that we remember to be in relationship with God. We remember to be attentive to our relationship with God, but we also remember to rest. And I like to remind people if it's good enough for God, it's probably good enough for me. God rested. Claim your rest as a sacred and holy gift that is part of creation and as part of you as a created being of God and as part of you as baptized into the one baptism. There's an ongoing relationship, and there's rest. And you have to find your rest in it, because it takes slightly different shapes for different people. And it's, it really is about honoring the sacredness of how we're created to be. For every moment of your rushing, assuming you rush anywhere, remember there's a whole created world that is also present with you and to which you're also relating, even if your relating is to rush by. And when Jesus says, go, go, make disciples, that's about sustaining the relationship and sustaining the discipling of ourselves and of each other, growing in our discipleship, right? It doesn't stop. There is no moment when you're done. Not done being created, not done being baptized, not done being discipled, not done being called. 
But together, we're called into this complex living thing that God made space for. Today, just Sabbath day, take space. Take space to encounter the holiness that God created in you and that God created for you. And that God created among us because he is with us to the end of the age. He is here. Amen. Let us confess together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for the world for a world in need. Holy three, holy one, you call the church to make disciples of all nations, encourage bishops, pastors, and deacons in their proclamation of the gospel, and direct all the baptized into lives of humble service. God in your mercy hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you spoke creation into being and called it good. Protect lands and waters threatened by human misuse and sustain living creatures of every kind. Wild animals, birds, fish, and every creeping thing. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you have given humankind authority over the earth. Rise, raise up leaders who listen earnestly, speak honestly, and govern thoroughly, thoughtfully. Heal divisions between nations that we might agree with one another and live in peace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you promise to be with us always, to the end of the age. Surround those most in need of your healing presence, any who are lonely, all who are grieving, and those who are sick. God in mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you set the earth on its axis, and we experience the seasons. Strengthen those enduring challenges this summer, those who suffer in the heat, parents overwhelmed by childcare responsibilities, and children experiencing food insecurity outside of school. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you teach us to go forth in your name. Dance through the ministry of presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton, Alaska Synod Bishop Shelley, Wick Shelley Wickstrom, Bishop Tessa Moon Lyseth of our Sister Synod, the Alaska Southeast Cluster, Pastor Karen Perkins, and Fairbanks Lutheran Church. God, in your mercy. Yeah. And for what do the people of God pray? For those in India who are still 
finding bodies from train crashes, for those in any place where there is a disasters that overwhelm the people. Holy three, holy one, you give rest when our work is done. Give thanks for all the saints who now rest in you, confident in the promise of resurrection life in the age to come. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the part of our service where we lift up our gifts to God. We offer ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Members, of course, are encouraged to give our regular tithes and offerings through an assigned number, and we have regular vehicles for doing that. You're invited to go to our website and use PayPal or one of the other donate buttons that we have on the website. You can make a special offering to the RLC on KINY ministry, which helps keep this on the air, or to the RLC food pantry, or to Juno Live, which helps with community outreach. You're also more than welcome to come by in person or make a food donation. We encourage people also to be involved with the community and appreciate volunteers. All of these things are gathered together in song. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation. Multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us announce together. The mission of Resurrection Lutheran Church is to promote spiritual growth in Christ and service to all people. The God who calls us across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed. Bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. This has been an abridged worship service of Resurrection Lutheran Church. You are welcome to join us for worship in person on Sunday mornings at 930. We are located at 740 West 10th Street in downtown Juneau. Our phone number is 586-2380. More information about our location, parking lot, current COVID policy, and other contact information is available on our website at rlcjuno.org. The website is also the best way to learn about what events are happening with the community outreach ministry, Juno Live. With a vital food pantry, bell choir, quilting group, Bible study, and others, there may be a ministry here just for you. Come and see.